Meeting the ever-changing healthcare needs of our communities, Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center is now Horizon Health with the same ownership, management, providers, and employees. Horizon Health provides patient care and promotes wellness to the communities of East Central Illinois. At HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, we are at work transforming heart care, rebuilding knees and hips, delivering new generations, and focused on providing health care to you. We are HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital. Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, supporting healthy lifestyles, eating a heart-healthy diet, staying active, managing stress, and regular checkups are ways of reducing your health risks. Proper health is important to all at Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System. At Carl, we dedicate ourselves to helping you be great. And we have the expertise and inspiration to help you stay that way. Hi, I'm Keanne Armstrong and I'm your host of Being Well. And today we're going to be talking about knees. We're going to be talking about athletic knee injuries and all types of different injuries that can happen to the knee. And so it's going to be very interesting, I think, for a lot of people out there that are involved in sports for the most part. And joining me today, I have Dr. Timothy Gray. He's an orthopedic surgeon with Benuti Clinic and Sarah Bush Lincoln. So thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, so I mean, there's lots of different things that can happen with the knee, lots of different sports out there that we can talk about and the different injuries. But I think a good place to start would be, let's talk about the anatomy of the knee first. Perfect place to start. Perfect, okay. exactly what I wanted to talk about. Basically, the knee is made up of three bones. Okay. Uh, there is the the, the thigh bone, which is the which would be uh, up here, the femur. There is the shin bone, which is the tibia, and there's the patella, which is the kneecap. Those are hard tissues. Those can be injured. Very traumatic injuries. Uh, that would be a hard tackle, a very hard fall. To get those to break, uh, it's it's a major uh, kinetic energy to to put that patient down. I don't really want to talk about the hard tissues. I really want to talk more about the soft tissue injuries that can occur. Okay. And those fall, fall in different categories. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this tear open with another model. All right. Gonna get that gonna get that kneecap out of the way because you're gonna see a lot more structures that way. Okay. Um, the two of the stabilizers, the the ligaments. Ligaments are stabilizers. They hold the the bones together. They hold the shin bone to the thigh bone. Okay. And there are, there are two different uh, uh, combinations of those. There is a medial collateral ligament, which runs to the inner aspect of the knee, and there's a lateral collateral ligament. Those are uh, knees that will, keep, those are ligaments that will keep the, the knee from opening up from a side to side fashion. All right. So those would be injured most commonly. Uh, you, you can sprain, strain, irritate a ligament. What it is, it's a stretch all the way up to possible tear is what it comes down to. Those are the classic injury of uh, a football lineman uh, is gets gets clipped mm -hmm. that, uh, that Red, uh, yellow flag goes right. up and, and he goes down. And what happens is they get clipped from the side, they get clipped from the side, opening, stressing that, that knee, and it can tear this medial collateral ligament. Okay. Uh, that is the, the probably the most common injury in, in football, in the, in, the, in the football player. Uh, other set of ligaments are the, what's called the, they're, they're inside the knee itself. They're called the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. They are ligaments that have the Latin root crew and that was just like crucifix they're crossing ligaments a lot of people feel they are they are crucial and they are crucial yeah. but the but crew is a latin term meaning cross okay. and they're crossing ligaments and those are on the inside those are uh, those are on the inside okay. basically what it comes down to is the the thigh bone comes down and it's, you've got a round thigh bone sitting on a flat shin bone and there's two little ball bearings basically and those cross in between the ball bearings in order to provide stability for anterior and posterior motion of the, of the knee itself. Okay. Uh, those also can be injured. Uh, the way you would injure those is, is different. What what happens is the, the anterior cruciate ligament, uh, you hear a lot of, of athletes, uh, basketball mm -hmm. players, that get the anterior cruciate ligament injury. Uh, that comes about usually that, that bad layup. They, they go up, mm -hmm. they come down with a, with a straight knee that causes a twist, kind of a hyperextension of that yeah. knee, and you can tear that anterior cruciate ligament. Okay, so is that all also what people refer to as ACL. ACL. Okay, I was trying to anterior, put the words anterior together. crucial ligament, ACL, exactly. That's the ACL injury is what okay. would, be, would be classic for that. Uh, 
it, its partner, the posterior cruciate ligament, which is the one behind it. Uh, in the United States, we get mostly anterior cruciate ligament in injuries, what we talk about. Uh -huh. uh, posterior cruciate ligament is a, is a much more injury that occurs in Taiwan. Really? Why uh, is that? Taiwan is a, is a scooter driving nation, uh -huh. uh, and that injury, uh, high speed scooters, direct trauma to the front of the shin uh, can tear the posterior cruciate ligament. So they do much more re reconstructions and, and get much more damage to the posterior cruciate ligament than we do uh, to the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay. The other soft structure uh, I'd like to talk about yeah. in, the, in the knee is what's called the meniscus. These are, these are okay. uh, the medial and lateral meniscus. Uh -huh. uh, what those are, those are cushions. Um, as I said, the thigh bone is round, mm -hmm. the shin bone is flat, so you don't really have a very good you don't really have a very good uh, contact point. I mean, you have a, you have a kind of isolated contact point for for bearing weight on the uh, on the knee. So what I always tell my patients these are kind of gaskets. They're little they're little soft tissue gaskets that lay around the outside to help expand the weight bearing zone uh, of the knee okay. to allow it to to roll and move, but then also to have have a a cup that it can sit in. Yeah, those can be injured in athletics as well. Uh, what it would be is in order to injure that you would you would load that knee up and with with weight mm -hmm. and then twist the knee and when that twists if you pinch that soft tissue uh, it can it can tear and once it tears it can then flip around and cause cause it so that ball bearing can't roll as well it can flip in and out of the joint and it can cause catching popping grinding okay. and a lot of pain All right. and along with that is the last one of the soft tissue injuries I want to talk about. And each of these bones have cartilage on the end of them. Uh, you've seen a chicken bone that yes. has that has that that yeah. glassy tissue on the on the end. That's the hyaline cartilage on the end. Well, any of these injuries can cause uh, direct trauma to those uh, to those areas, which can cause bruising and inflammation of those. It can cause just softening of it. Uh, it's, it's referred to as chondromalacia, which would be chondro is cartilage, malacia is damage, uh, oh. and it's graded from from one to four. One is just bruising. Four is it's completely sheared off, and now you've got raw bone underneath. Okay. So those are the major injuries that can occur to the soft tissues about the knee, uh, and they can occur in any combination. And to prove that orthopedics has some poetry to it, I guess, yeah. uh, the one of the, most, one of the most common is called the unhappy triad of the knee, uh, which would be a combination of the anterior ACL, yes. anterior cruciate ligament, the medial collateral, and the medial meniscus, okay. all being torn together. And you can well imagine that uh, that's much more devastating than any yes. one, of the, one of them alone. Very painful. Yes, very painful, yes. Uh, so, okay, well, let's go back to, we know the anatomy of the knee, we know the parts of it now. We've heard about the ACL, the meniscus, because I think that's something that more common folk hear people talk about a lot, you know, torn meniscus or the ACL, they've done something to that. What types of injuries, uh, what types of sports or different things that people do besides you know what you mentioned with the clipping of the football that you see often with those types of inter injuries. Well, again, all, all the sports as we talked about, uh, you would see that you would see this in a lot of this in football, uh, basketball, um, but motor vehicle accidents also uh, okay. increase. Uh, you know, and, and often they'll, they'll they'll try and describe what happened, and people say, "Well, is that a mechanism?" Well, you know, I think in a motor vehicle accident, there's a lot of things going on at any one time. So, though we don't know what stresses necessarily occurred in that accident, that hitting the dash being twisted under the under the wreckage so to speak mm -hmm. um, it happens so fast it, it's very difficult for them to describe exactly what happens so you have to piece it together on the exam sometimes exactly what the injuries are uh, not just by what they said happened um, and even quite honestly this some of these can be just wear and tear injuries as we age as we become an aging population weekend athletes are much more likely to have some of these injuries than than uh, those young high school kids that are almost indestructible yeah. uh, because some of those cartilages they, they start to soften they start to weaken and uh, they can be torn much more easily okay well a lot of times when you're watching sports you'll see a, a physician run out to the field and do some field care on on an injury so talk to me about that what what's going on when that happens well I think there's two reasons that they do that one I think everybody's mother likes to see him on camera <laughs> I mean, and you know well, that's always a good face yeah, time right. but I think the real reason they go out there is uh, the knee is has, has a bunch of uh, secondary structures in order to the muscles the the tendons which connect the muscles to the bone to add stability and, and can you know to spasm very quickly after an injury so in order to really get a good feel of, of what has happened to what ligament uh, 
evaluating that patient on the field uh, before they can really guard, before they can really, the muscles go into spasm, you can, you can stress those, those joints and see where they're tender and see if they really are opening, uh, if the ligaments are, are unstable, if it, if it slides back and forth. And your best time is probably within the first 20 minutes of injury because after 20 minutes of injury, uh, the knee will fill with blood uh, okay. on certain injuries. Uh, the muscles will go into spasm and they're having a lot more the pain just is, is on board so that you really can't get a good exam uh, for probably a couple weeks uh, just because there's so much guarding and, and the patient is so resistant to acti to uh, evaluation. Okay, swelling I'm sure as well. The bleeding, the swelling, irritation into the knee, yes, will okay. block that that uh, adequate evaluation. All right, so it's the blood that's swelling the, the knee, is that? It bleeds, it can bleed into the knee. Oh, okay. Uh, if, if you tear the anterior, what, one of the, one of the uh, classic uh, signs for an anterior cruciate ligament tear is uh, if it tears, it is one of the only vascularized structures in the knee joint proper and it will bleed into the knee so the knee will balloon up within the first 20 minutes of, of that injury. If you've hurt the other ligaments, they're not really in the joint. So yes, the knee will swell and get irritated, but it usually take a little longer period of time. Okay. So if someone isn't playing in a sport where you know they're on a team or something like this, maybe they're out running by themselves or they're doing something outside of a group setting and they feel like they've done something to their knee, they, they don't know how bad the injury is, that might be something where it's just a little painful, what do you advise when someone's by themselves and they feel like they've done something. Anytime that uh, any joint, uh, knee, knee included, if you've injured yourself, um, if you're having pain, you feel unstable, you're, you're not getting around well, but you're not really major injury, no car accident, nothing mm -hmm. that you really are, are concerned that you've really caused major damage. Uh, we recommend what we call RICE. Uh, okay. It's an acronym for, for that first 24 hours, what you wanna do is you wanna rest the joint, that's involved. You want to apply ice uh, for 20 minutes at a time. Don't sleep with ice on it because uh, you can now turn an injured joint into a frostbitten uh, joint. Uh, you can actually damage the skin. So uh, 20 minutes of ice in order to help control that swelling. Uh, compression, so a, uh, an ACE wrap uh, in order to kind of, again, keep the swelling down so it can't get out of control. If, if you put pressure on those on that joint, that it won't swell as much. Okay. And elevation, if you get it above your heart, uh, again, it kind of puts a lower blood pressure in there so it's less likely to swell. Okay. Uh, the swelling can cause uh, irritation in itself and be more difficult. Um, usually patients often ask, well, should I be using ice? Should I be using heat, which yeah. is better? In the initial injury, of any initial injury, you stretch, you pull, you tear, you can tear some small vessels which mm -hmm. will bleed. So we usually recommend if it's an isolated injury, uh, 24 hours of ice, by then those small vessels should have sealed themselves off so they're not actively bleeding anymore. And now what you wanna do is the swelling that has occurred there, you wanna apply heat because now you wanna dilate those vessels so they, now they can take any fluid that has accumulated, they can take it away and get it out of that area okay. uh, in order to decrease the swelling in that way. Right. So ice for the first 24, heat after that. Heat after that, so don't heat it first. Nope, now on athletes, sometimes what we'll do is since they are gonna go back to play and, uh -huh. and, and do more and more micro trauma uh, to themselves, uh, we'll, we'll condense that and we will say, okay, after practice, ice it for 20 minutes and then when you get home, apply heat at that point in time because they're not having a one set injury, they are, they're irritating an old injury over and over again. All right, well, that's what I was gonna ask you. So do you see a lot of people who maybe wait too long to come see you and they're like, ah, it'll heal, it'll get better and then it just gets worse? It, yeah, we have people that, that, that always think they've uh, just, I just strained it, right. I just twisted it, I just irritated it uh, and then they'll come in with, uh, with uh, more problems. They don't usually cause a lot more trauma to it. I mean, okay. if it's really if it's really damaged, it gets you to the, if it's damaged enough that you're gonna hurt it more, your body's pretty good about protecting itself, uh, not not uh, walking with a, with a limp and, all, and yes. trying to protect it, keep staying off it. Uh, you won't let you re-hurt yourself very well. Uh, the interesting thing is often with a cartilage tear, uh, some people will tear that meniscus, and that, as I said, that piece will flip back and forth into mm -hmm. the joint. Well, it's more likely to flip back and forth if you're rolling the joint back in place. So often we'll see patients that will come in like a month after they've done it, and they say, you know, it's, it's finally getting better. And you see them walk in, and they walk in with a, a peg leg. They don't, as long as they're not rolling, if they're not rolling the knee joint, the meniscus isn't isn't slipping underneath it, so they they walk around peg right. legs and think they're getting better, but they're not. It, right. it needs to be addressed. They've yeah. adapted. They've the, learned. Yeah, yeah, they've learned how not to cause more pain. Right. Yeah. So, what can a, a person expect when they go into either your office 
or if they would have to go into an emergency room situation, kind of walk a patient through, I guess both, and like how you diagnose what the problem is. Well, the well, first thing that you'd see, you'd come into the office, you'd describe what happened to you, you'd go, go to the emergency room, they'd describe what happened to them. Uh, pretty much uh, knee jerk treatment for any uh, orthopedic traumatic injuries, we're gonna get an x-ray, gonna make sure you didn't an injure those hard bones that we talked about. Uh, you know, I guess I've been watching uh, soccer and you would think that every those soccer floppers, they're killing themselves. They're, I can't believe they're not losing legs with the amount of injury apparently they're having. But uh, um, uh, so you'll make sure there's no patella fracture, no femur fracture, no tibia fracture. Uh, if the x-ray is negative, um, and again, before the x-ray, you'll do a physical exam. Uh, you're looking for, if you're looking at, a, you wanna make sure the soft tissues are intact. Uh, you wanna make sure the patient has active extension because if this patient would, would rupture this this patellar tendon, which mm -hmm. holds the, the patella to the, to the rest of the bone, mm -hmm. uh, they no longer can actively extend the knee, so you'd know that was a, a problem. But if they can actively extend it, then you're going to, to palpate along the joint line. Mm -hmm. If they're tender along the joint line, you can, you can pinch and try and load up that torn meniscus and move it through an arc of motion. If that causes pain, that's gonna make you concerned that he has a meniscus tear, or okay. he or she, I shouldn't say, right. this female athletes, this yeah. as well, um, a meniscus tear. If you're worried about a, a possible ligament tear, they, again, the clipping injury, what you're gonna do is you're gonna support that knee and you're gonna stress it in the opposite direction. The ligaments would, will get, cause pain and instability on the, when you, when you put traction on them. Now, when I'm putting traction on this, I'm putting uh, compression on the lateral meniscus. So you're kind of evaluating both at the same time. Yeah. And then when you do the opposite way, you're, you're, putting, you're putting traction on the lateral collateral ligament and you're putting compression on the medial meniscus. So again, you're looking at when you're making that maneuver, you're looking at are you hurting inside or outside and are you hurting on the compressive or on the traction side. Then when you're looking at the, the crossing ligaments, the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, you're going to basically try and put it in the the secondary ligaments in a in a lax position, and you're going to draw forward. It's called a, a Lachman or a drawer test, which mm -hmm. is is trying to see if that tibia slips forward on the femur. And if if you're looking for the posterior, you're going to hold it flexed, and you're going to push it back and see if it sags. Because if it sags, that could be a posterior cruciate ligament okay. uh, injury. So those are some of the the tests that you do in order to uh, evaluate. In this day of modern medicine, yeah. uh, also the cartilage, if you're pushing on the ends of the bone, mm -hmm. that can be condomalacia. That's harder to evaluate on just a simple exam because okay. it could just be bruising and irritation. In the day of modern medicine, we, uh, we have the luxury of the, of the, of the MRI, yes. um, which is a soft tissue x-ray, and you would send them through the MRI, which is very good at diagnosing these soft tissue tears. Okay. Uh, you have a high index of suspicion. That's not 100% on that test, but it can also confirm or rule out uh, certain injuries. Well, I was gonna ask, you mentioned the x-ray, so you need an MRI to see about the soft tissue. The x-ray won't show that, it yeah. only shows the bone? It only shows the bone. Okay. Uh, x-ray will not really show that, those meniscus, those uh, those ligaments, no. Okay, well let's talk about conservative, conservative care of the knee versus maybe you, you need to go a little bit more drastic and go into surgery, and so when do you know the difference? Well, uh, Partly it has to do with what the injury we diagnose. Okay. Um, if you're looking at a medial, an isolated medial or lateral collateral ligament tears, uh, those are outside of the of the knee joint proper. They actually lay on the outside capsule. Mm -hmm. They are held in position very well. So as a general rule, even if you tear that, it doesn't need, it almost never needs surgery. What you would do is you need to protect it though. So you would start off, usually they come out of the emergency room, you'd have a knee immobilizer on. Uh -huh. And unfortunately that makes you walk like the, the peg leg, peg like leg. we talked about the, uh, no they're rolling. gonna do them with no roll. Well, but it's, it's really, trying to keep pre and prevent this varus valgus, yeah. this inner and outer stress on those ligaments that are that are stretched. I always kind of refer to those as uh, uh, shoestrings on the outside, mm -hmm. and you can get some some partial injury. You can get a full tear of those of that shoestring, but really it should heal as long as you can protect it. And this is the patient you would see that you put act after the first week or so. You'll put in a hinged knee brace, mm -hmm. so now it has structure to the inside and outside. So again, it's going to prevent that that stress of of opening up and let that ligament heal itself. Okay. If you're talking about a anterior cruciate ligament, mm -hmm. now I haven't treated a posterior cruciate ligament tear in probably over 20 years. Really? So, so I, 
I guess I don't know as much about that, but anterior cruciate ligaments. Most of us really can get by without an anterior cruciate ligament. Now, the young individuals, athletes, uh -huh. uh, they're going to need to have it have it taken care of much more commonly than 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 uh, the older, weak, and warrior. What we can do is, first of all, you would I, you would put it to rest. Uh -huh. You do a hinged brace. Uh, sometimes you can do a special protective brace, which uh, which will help hold it in place even better, kind of a custom type brace. But the real key is um, doing using the secondary stabilizers in the long run to do the work. What you do is your hamstrings are can be very strong and the, the ligament is trying to the anterior crucial ligament is trying to keep your, your tibia from riding forward on mm -hmm. your femur. Well if you can strengthen these secondary dynamic ligaments, that uh, secondary dynamic structures, the the hamstrings, you would do therapy okay. in order to strengthen those so they could they could bypass the function of the anterior so cruciate the ligament. Backup. The back, those, okay. those muscles in the back, which are contracting and holding those, holding that tibia back uh, with with regular activities. Uh, old number used to say about only about a third of the anterior cruciate ligament injuries had to have to have surgical intervention. Um, I think that they probably we orthopedists today push that envelope because there are some newer techniques that maybe we do more of them than that. Uh, but as a general rule, uh, it, you can get by without uh, repairing the anterior cruciate ligament. You just need to have conservative care and maybe bracing for special activities. Okay. Uh, meniscus tear. Yes. Uh, now you've got some bodies floating around inside there. About five or 10% of the patients can, can kind of grind that cartilage up on their own and get better. Most of them have to have a small surgery, knee arthroscopy. I say it's small because they're not doing it on me. It's on somebody. <laughs> right. They have to live with it. But um, they don't have to, the, I guess, make an incision. It's more of a scope, right? It's a knee arthroscopy. Uh, okay. two, two little stab incisions in yeah. order to get into the knee and uh, clean, out, uh, the, clean out that joint. Remove that debris that's floating around so the ball bearing can roll more normal. Okay. All right. So let's talk about healing time when it comes to some of these injuries and maybe post-operative. Talk to me about maybe healing time and what happens afterwards. Okay, well, I, the the medial and lateral collateral ligament, as we said, is usually a conservative care. Uh, usually takes uh, we would do some type of protection for six to eight weeks. Uh, we would start them on uh, a very protected, uh, obviously, for the first three, and then they can start advancing their activities. You'd have some type of brace for probably up to eight weeks. And after eight weeks, if they are clinically doing well, feeling comfortable, confident, and no pain, you treat it, uh, you would let them leave, get rid of the brace and maybe use it if they're gonna do some high stress activities. Uh, wanna go out and play some basketball or play some sports, uh, put the brace back on, maybe even up for a full six months to protect that, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but you don't have to have it the whole time. They used to use uh, college football players, um, the linemen, they had enough MCL injuries, medial collateral ligament injuries, that they started to use uh, hinge knee braces as a preventative yeah. for that. Well, the problem with that became now you didn't have that give that would occur when that clipping, when that 300 pound beast landed on your leg. Right. You didn't have that ligament that could give. So now you would have catastrophic injury. You could start getting fractures. So yes, we still use those braces once you've had an injury, but usually we don't encourage the, the uh, linemen to wear them until they've had an injury, okay. uh, so to speak. As for the anterior cruciate ligament tear, mm -hmm. Uh, if if you can get if again the same type of uh, treatment um, bracing for high stress activity eight weeks of protection and then kind of just using it for activities if you can if they're finding that they can get by without having to have it reconstructed if you have to go in for surgery uh, much more major intervention uh, you you have to it can't repair it you can't just sew it up it won't heal so you have to reconstruct it you'd have to harvest graft from either the patient themselves or you have to harvest graft from, an, from a, a donor, a, a, a cadaver donor, uh, in order to drill holes and reconstruct that ligament. Well, that has to be incorporated. That, yeah. Those bone plugs have to heal in. Uh, that itself takes eight to 10, up to 12 weeks to heal in. Then it has to regrow into mm -hmm. the ligament itself. It can be a six month uh, yeah. ordeal to try and get over. So we try and avoid doing that mm -hmm. in the older individuals that aren't gonna have that amount of demand. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes left here, but I want to talk about um, briefly preventative. What's some things that you tell people, hey, to prevent injuries if you're involved in sports, I mean, stretching, like what types of things do you tell them to do? Well, exactly right. Stretching, staying in, staying in good condition. I mean, yeah. obviously weekend warriors are, are, we don't do anything all week long and then we try and jump out there and, and play basketball. Um, uh, sometimes compress a little com if you have a, a sore achy joint some compressive uh, sleeves in order to help give it some support try and avoid the hinges uh, 
staying within yourself, don't do anything crazy, and, uh, and, and be safe. Okay, now you have a vlog that uh, folks can tune into on Facebook, and when do you post that? And I post it on, on uh, Sarah Bush's uh, Facebook uh, every Wednesday. Uh, it's uh, usually like a three, four minute uh, information on different orthopedic injuries, uh, trying to get some information out there, mm -hmm. try and uh, let people know what we what we treat and what they can do to help, uh, help themselves. All right, well, we've covered a lot of information today out there for folks involved in sports, different knee injuries. And so, um, Dr. Timothy Gray, an orthopedic surgeon with Sarah Bush, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you Lots so much. of different information there, know how to take care of the knee, the rice method, the vlog if they want more information. So, thank you so much for being a part of our show. Thanks for having me, I really yeah, appreciate sure. it. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Being Well. For more information, you can tune in online and on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, supporting healthy lifestyles, eating a heart-healthy diet, staying active, managing stress, and regular checkups are ways of reducing your health risks. Proper health is important to all at Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System. At Carl, we dedicate ourselves to helping you be great. And we have the expertise and inspiration to help you stay that way. Meeting the ever-changing healthcare needs of our communities, Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center is now Horizon Health with the same ownership, management, providers, and employees. Horizon Health provides patient care and promotes wellness to the communities of East Central Illinois. At HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, we are at work transforming heart care, rebuilding knees and hips, delivering new generations, and focused on providing health care to you. We are HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital.